Hello, this is Chuck, and I thought it would be a good idea to go over some biodiesel basics. Uh, this is a PowerPoint presentation that I got from the National Corn to Ethanol Research Center when I purchased their biodiesel synthesis demonstration kit. We'll take a look at that in more detail in upcoming courses. Uh, some of the topics that we're going to cover today is uh, what is biodiesel, uh, the synthesis, synthesis of biodiesel, biodiesel feedstocks, comparison of biodiesel to diesel, and where is biodiesel being produced. Biodiesel is a clean burning alternative fuel produced from domestic renewable resources can be defined as the esters of fatty acids derived from vegetable oils or animal fats. If methyl alcohol is used, it's called a methyl ester, and if ethyl alcohol is used, it's called an ethyl ester. The plant-based oils are like uh, soybean oil, canola oil, or waste vegetable oil. These are all uh, unsaturated fats. Uh, the animal-based oils would be things from beef tallow or chicken fat. Uh, these would be saturated fats. Uh, they don't seem to flow quite as nicely. So our challenge is to take these feedstocks and make them into a usable fuel for use in a compression ignition engine. An ester is formed when an alcohol reacts with a fatty acid. For example, the reaction between methanol and corn oil, which contains mostly oleic acid, would be as follows. Methanol plus the oleic acid will give us an ester and water. Um, lipids, fats, oils, these, are, um, these have a three ester bond. Uh, they're tri triglycerides. And the process that we're going through here is called transesterification, which we're actually breaking these, these bonds. This is what the demonstration kit uh, will look like. Uh, it has the steps uh, used to uh, produce biodiesel. So we're taking a alcohol, either methanol or ethanol, and Re, uh, reacting that in a chemical reaction with potassium hydroxide, which is the catalyst, with either a soybean oil or a canola oil or an animal fat, and then we're getting a biodiesel out of that. So we're, we're taking in the reactor, we're heating this to 55 degrees centigrade in the reactor for 90 minutes, then we're going to cool it for two hours to let the glycerol uh, settle out uh, because the biodiesel is lighter. And for an example, we'll be taking, if we take 100 pounds of soybean oil with 10 pounds of methanol, we're going to end up with a 100 pounds of biodiesel and 10 pounds of glycerol. Then we'll, uh, in step seven and eight here, we're drawing off the glycerol and then we'll uh, wash wash the biodiesel to remove any excess methanol or potassium hydroxide that might be in the biodiesel. And then we take the biodiesel and typically we'll mix it, uh, blend it with a petroleum diesel in either a B2, B11, or a B20 blend. And we'll talk a little bit more about that in just a moment. Now these are just some uh, over-the-shelf type uh, items that you could purchase. Uh, to make uh, biodiesel. Uh, as shown in the preceding reaction, biodiesel methyl esters can be produced when a vegetable oil or animal fat is chemically reacted with methyl alcohol in the presence of a catalyst like potassium hydroxide. Potassium or sodium hydroxide is required for this reaction to, com to occur. Uh, sorry. Uh, you could get potassium uh, hydroxide, you know, as a commercially available as uh, Red Devil Lye, 
but uh, I think in the previous picture they had a picture of Drano, which you wouldn't want to use Drano. Uh, it, it contains aluminum. Uh, the methanol uh, can be purchased at a local automotive, automotive store as a de-icer for gasoline, such as uh, heat. And then you can use any vegetable oil or animal fat uh, to produce biodiesel. This is a nice picture of how the glycerol uh, will settle out of the biodiesel. So the glycerol is at the bottom and the biodiesel is on the top there. And as we mentioned earlier, 100 pounds of oil plus 10 pounds of methanol gives us 100 pounds of biodiesel plus 10 pounds of glycerol. Uh, glycerol, uh, you can call it glycerin or glycerine, glycerine uh, is produced uh, as a, a commercial uh, co-product uh, that can be used in soaps, cosmetics, antifreezes, uh, etc. And biodiesel can be made from uh, several different feedstocks. Uh, usually we're using a vegetable oil such as soybean oil or canola oil or corn even, uh, cottonseed oil, palm oil, peanut oil. Uh, palm oil actually produces the most oil pounds per acre, which would be 4,585. Soybean produce 345 pounds of oil per acre, and corn produces 135 pounds of oil per acre. Uh, then we'll be using animal fats such as beef tallow or lard or restaurant waste oils such as frying oils as other types of feedstocks that can be used. The B20, B2, B100, uh, it's, it's the ratio of petroleum diesel and pure biodiesel. So that uh, B2 is 2% biodiesel and 98% petroleum diesel. B20 is 20% biodiesel and 80% petroleum diesel. Uh, B100 be, would be 100% biodiesel mixed with no petroleum diesel. I would like to take a moment here just to say that B20 is really a, a good balance. It's it's probably the most popular in the Midwest. Uh, the B100 uh, is uh, not as good in the cold weather. The B20 has a, a good balance uh, for cost of production, uh, emissions reduction, cold weather performance, and uh, it's a good lubricant uh, in the engine. And current uh, compression style engines are compatible with B20. Uh, they do recommend uh, that uh, the first two or three tank loads that you burn in the engine, you should probably change the fuel filters because the biodiesel cleans out the engine and so it kind of cleans out some of the gunk that's in the engine and it could foul those uh, filters. So just change them, uh, you know, with each tank, the first two or three tanks. Biodiesel compared to number two petroleum diesel, biodiesel fuels tend to have lower, lower energy uh, than a number two diesel. Uh, on a weight basis, the energy level is 12.5% less. However, since biodiesel is more dense than diesel fuel, the energy content is only 8% less on a per gallon basis. So the energy content comparison for number two petroleum diesel, uh, they give you 129,000 BTU per gallon. Uh, the biodiesel would be 118,000 BTU per gallon, which is 8% less. But the, with a B, B, uh, 20 you, you're going to have uh, really similar fuel consumption, similar engine torque, similar haulage rates, and improved engine lubrication uh, by almost greater than 65%. So it's a, it's a good thing. Uh, it should be noted that biodiesel will gel uh, in very cold temperatures just like uh, number two diesel petroleum diesel does pure biodiesel 
B100 has a higher cloud point than number two diesel fuel. Typically benzo blends of 20% biodiesel require the same fuel management techniques as number two petroleum diesel. So the cloud point of a fuel is the temperature at which solids begin to crystallize in the fuel as it is cooled. Uh, so B100 uh, is going to start crystallizing at 30 to 40 degrees Fahrenheit. So this really isn't good for us here in the Midwest because temperatures will typically get a lot colder than 30 to 40 degrees Fahrenheit. That might be good that might be a good fuel you can use in the southern climate where it stays above 40 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, but common here in the Midwest is B20, which will start to crystallize at somewhere between 2 and 10 degrees Fahrenheit. And so you would treat B20 the same way as you would uh, number 2 petroleum diesel, which is going to start to gel or crystallize at the 2 to 10 degree Fahrenheit. But you would just use a fuel additive uh, that helps prevent that gelling. Other advantages, uh, again, uh, what we've talked about in the whole biofuel introduction here is, you know, biodiesel can be synthesized from renewable natural resources. Uh, it reduces our energy on uh, dependence on uh, foreign oil and reduces our trade deficit, has a greater cetane number, uh, than number two diesel fuel, and it reduces sulfur oxide emissions by almost 100%. Um, a high cetane number is a, is a good thing. Uh, the fuel has a low resistance to pre-ignition. Uh, that's a good thing in a compression ig ignition engine. You don't want to have pre-ignition. Some other comparisons uh, for biodiesel is you're going to see fewer unburned hydrocarbons, less carbon monoxide, less particulate matter, slightly more uh, nitrogen oxides. Uh, oxides of nit uh, nitrogen, uh, it, they're a problem for diesel as well as biodiesel. Uh, that, that problem is being looked at and being solved due to, you know, technological advances in the emission reduction measures in the exhaust stream and electronically controlled injector system that allow the soot to kind of be burnt up uh, in the motor. Uh, this is an old uh, picture of the United States 2007 showing the biodiesel plants. At that time they had 105 biodiesel plants but uh, actually here now in 2013 uh, this map comes from Biodiesel Magazine. Uh, we have 206 biodiesel uh, plants in the United States with another 15 under construction. And in 2006, uh, they had a capacity of 354 million gallons per year, but now with the 206 plants, uh, that has increased to uh, 2,943 million gallons per year. So look for the pumps. The, they're coming soon to a station near you. And uh, thank you. If you have any questions, uh, put them up in the discussion board. Thank you.